All right, so uh, I'm glad everybody was able to join us. Hello, uh, I'm Christine Skamen. I'm a associate professor in the food science program that's in the Faculty of Land and Food Systems. So today in our um, session, we're going to be able to give you an overview of the aquaculture industry, um, talk about some of the innovations that are going on and the types of careers that are available uh, in BC. And as you know, the Faculty of Land and Food Systems here at UBC is starting a new graduate certificate in aquaculture, and we'll have our first intake in September of 2020. Uh, just so you're aware, we are recording today's session, and we'll be posting it on the aquaculture website. And so if you want to review it again, it'll be there for you, or if you want to uh, send it on to somebody that you think might benefit from it, that would be great. Uh, if you have questions, uh, please use the chat function. And if you're not familiar with this uh, platform, you'll find it. It's at the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. So if you click the arrow, uh, you will uh, it'll open up and you'll see a speech bubble uh, where you can um, click on that. And then there'll be an option to chat at the top of that panel. OK, so we have muted you as participants, but if you um, have any technical issues, please post them in the chat. And as well, if you have any questions that come up during the talk, you can post them there, and then we'll be addressing them at the end of the um, talk. Um, and now I'd just like to introduce our speaker for today. So our presenter is Justin Henry. Uh, he is the new uh, business director for the certificate. And a little bit about Justin's background. He's a registered professional biologist. He's actually an alumnus of uh, UBC. So in 1995, he graduated with a specialization in aquaculture. And then he went on to get a master's degree in aquaculture biotechnology from Aalborg University in Denmark. And Justin has 25 plus years of uh, aquaculture industry experience. He helped bring organic aquaculture to Canada in his role as the chair of the Canadian General Standards Board Committee. And he'll be talking a little bit about that today. And that has, um, that board developed Canadian organic agriculture standards. And so with that, uh, I'll ask Justin to uh, let us know a little bit more about aquaculture. Today. Okay, thank you, uh, Chris, and uh, welcome, everybody. We must plant the sea and herd its animals using the sea as farmers instead of hunters. That is what civilization is all about, farming, replacing, hunting. That was the great marine explorer and researcher, Jacques Cousteau, in 1971. A land and food systems at UBC recognizes this important role that aquaculture must play in food production. And this upcoming September, as Chris uh, mentioned, uh, we're launching a graduate certificate in aquaculture. I believe that this is an important strategic step, step for our faculty the program will consist of seven courses. Aqua 501 is aquaculture production systems. Aqua 502, fish nutrition, feeds and feeding. Aqua 503, fish health. Aqua 504, fish genetics and reproduction in aquaculture. Aquaculture five, Aqua 505, ecological sustainability of aquaculture. Aqua 506, business concepts in aquaculture and Aqua 507 Seafood Processing. It is a one semester full-time program and it'll run from September through to December. Now, of course, uh, Cousteau was the first to recognize the necessity of aquaculture. It has a rather long history dating back more than 4,000 years. Early was before the advent of printing and as such no records are available except the narratives handed down from one generation to another. Now the first known written record is from 473 BC in a book entitled The Classic of Fish Culture by Fanley and here is an image from that book. 
There are also examples closer to home. Right here in British Columbia, local First Nations were building clam bed farms 3,500 years ago. We started fin fish aquaculture in Canada around 1857. Now here's a drawing from a farm in what was then called the Dominion of Canada in 1877. Now let's jump ahead to 1950. As rainbow trout farming began to emerge on a commercial scale globally. Here's the growth over the past 68 years. So this is from FAO data, which is currently reported up to 2018. Atlantic salmon farming was later to emerge, but rapid in its development. Now Canada only produces about 120,000 tons of Atlantic salmon, right around there. However, Atlantic salmon is still Canada's number one aquaculture product in terms of tonnage and revenue. It's also British Columbia's number one agricultural export. Now, salmon is not the only species with a rapid increase in production. This is what our seafood production looks like on a global scale with all species. In 2011, global farmed fish production surpassed global farmed beef production. In 2014, it surpassed wild fish production, and it's now gaining on pork and chicken. But if we look back here in at 1996, when most of the people graduating with their bachelor degree this year were not uh, even born yet, is when the wild fishery peaked. Since 1996, I couldn't help but notice that technology has changed dramatically in every sector, including the fishing sector, where drones can now be used to locate fish and sonar to view, in some cases, as with the sturgeon, every fish. Yet, we can't catch any more fish. This is a catastrophe that's yet to be truly revealed, but the point here is that any increases in seafood production will come from aquaculture. Why is salmon and aquaculture in general having such a rapid increase in production? One, it's extremely healthy to eat, uh, particularly with the DHA and EPA fatty acids. Two, it's all delicious, so people want to eat it. Uh, three, wealth has increased, so more people can afford to eat it. And four, it's become available in a variety of uh, convenient forms, which students will learn about in Aqua 507 seafood processing. On the production side, fish convert feed more efficiently than any other farmed animal. There are many reasons for this, and one is that fish are put kilotherms, so they do not have a big energy requirement to control their body temperature. Another is that the building of bone mass is not required to fight gravity. In 2018, DFO, with input from multiple stakeholders and a workshop at the Pacific Science Enterprise Center, or PSEC, in West Vancouver, developed a list of about 100 research projects, which were divided into these priority categories. Environment, nutrition, diversification, fish health, genetics, and maturation. Both industry and DFO have been carrying out research in these fields. Now students will visit PSEC as part of the certificate program. A main research focus around net pen aquaculture has been on environmental interactions, such as benthic impacts and how pathogens spread from wild fish into the farm and vice versa. Industry and DFO have focused research in this area. And these topics will be covered in Aqua 505, Ecological Sustainability of Aquaculture. Lots of new technologies are being used to monitor physical systems and to monitor the fish. 
support industries are really innovating here. Now keep in mind as we move through these slides that jobs are available throughout all of these areas of the aquaculture sector, including research, innovation, production, uh, system design, fish health, feed production, processing, environmental monitoring, breeding, genetics, and many other areas. This program called Tidal is being developed by Alphabet together with MOE, the largest salmon producer, both globally and here in British Columbia, to help analyze the health, feeding, and behavior of the fish. The next several years, we'll see significant improvements in these areas with the adoption of AI, IoT, and other technologies. As the global availability of fish oil and fish meal are finite, the industry is innovating with the development of new feed ingredients. One of the main emerging ingredients is insects, in this case, black soldier fly larvae, for which there's a farm uh, right here in the lower mainland called Entera. Another feed ingredient will be algae. This is an algae farm in the desert in New Mexico. <clears throat> now, these alternative feed ingredients will soon uh, scale up in production. Students in the certificate program will learn about these novel feed ingredients in Aqua 502, fish nutrition, feeds, and feeding. Industry is also innovating in terms of types of culture systems, which will be taught in Aqua 501, aquaculture production systems. New production systems for salmon include open ocean offshore systems as seen here. This is Ocean Farm 1, the largest finfish cage built so far. It's being delivered by barge from China to Scotland. Another emerging type of system is called recirculating aquaculture system, or RAS, sometimes referred to as RAS. Now fish in this system, fish are fed in the culture tanks and like people, they produce ammonia, solid waste and carbon dioxide. So what happens here is that the water is discharged from the tanks and then it goes through uh, filtration for solids, either mechanical filtration or settling. Then carbon dioxide is stripped from the water. A uh, biological filter consumes the ammonia to produce nitrate. And then the water is recirculated back to the fish. Systems being built now can recirculate in excess of 99.9% .9 of the water flow. Now, while RAS has been in existence for a couple of decades now, some systems are recently being scaled up for the grow out of salmon to a harvest size of five kilos. This new farm in Florida, currently under construction, has dozens of these large tanks where they plan to produce 10,000 tons of salmon per year, which will make it the largest RAS farm to date. With this trend in RAS, comes just a plethora of urgent areas of R&D. For example, these two compounds, geosmin and 2-methyl isoborneol, exist in RAS, as they do in many lake streams in British Columbia, and they cause an off flavor in the fish. Although finishing systems have been designed which enable the fish to purge those compounds, there's lots of R&D being carried out, and that needs to be carried out, to figure out how to consume those compounds within the system. Students will learn about this in Aqua 507 and Aqua 501. Another type of aquaculture system is organic aquaculture. Now this is not specific to the technology used, but rather the manner in which the animals are farmed. Canada released its organic aquaculture standard in 2012 and finally fell under regulation in 2019. Currently in Canada, products certified organic under this standard include mussels, Chinook salmon, rainbow trout, coho salmon, sturgeon, and a variety of plants. In addition to the environmental, regenerative, and health reasons for organic farming systems, in some cases, the product can demand a premium in the market. Marketing and many other uh, business concepts will be introduced in Aqua 506, 
business concepts in aquaculture. Industry in BC has been very proactive with fish health and biosecurity. I remember reading a statistic several years ago that showed that a single poultry farm in the Maritimes had used more antibiotics than all of the Canadian aquaculture industry combined. Students will learn about fish health in Aqua 503, Fish Health. In 2014, the Atlantic Salmon Genome was sequenced under a Genome Canada project, which has opened the door to an entirely new field of R&D and innovation. The Coho Salmon Genome is also being mapped. This is the Northern Divine Coho Broodstock Farm, one of the sites that students may visit during the Graduate Certificate in Aquaculture program. Aqua 504, Finfish Genetics and Reproduction in Aquaculture will cover this material. And this new program at UBC will cover these topics that I've just presented and many more. Again, there are seven courses which will be taught. I developed the first course, Aqua 501, and Jason Mann, probably the top fish nutritionist in North America, has developed Aqua 502. Barry Milligan, renowned fish veterinarian in British Columbia, is developing Aqua 503. Wendy Vandersteen, a UBC alumnus and fish geneticist, is developing Aqua 504. Aqua 505 is being developed by Andrea Frommel, currently carrying out research at UBC on environmental effects on fish. Jessica Oman from the UBC Sauter School of Business is developing Aqua 506. And Nika Singh, food processing lecturer and researcher who joined LFS about three years ago is developing Aqua 507. Here is the website and contact information for anyone interested in further exploring the program. And I think we can okay. open it up for some discussion and questions. Yes, thanks, Justin. Um, I should also mention there's an option to raise your hand if you have a question and we can uh, address questions through audio as well. But if you have any questions, please uh, either chat them to us or uh, we'll use audio. Uh, so um, one of our first questions is this online or on campus at this point. Um, it may depend on how things work out over the summer. So the intention was to have it as a on-campus course. Um, with the COVID situation, it may be changed to be online. Now there are still field trips and we would have to see if we can establish safe ways of uh, carrying those out under these conditions. Okay, and so another question is how many weeks, hours per week are allotted to each course? Um, Justin, you've been involved in developing that schedule. So do you want to talk about that a little bit? Uh, yeah, that the uh, program would be between two and three hours per week of, of class time per course. And then of course there are uh, projects that students will be working on in addition to that. Uh, as well as the field trips. And so the schedule is not like a typical um, undergrad schedule where it's uh, a course three times a week for the 13 weeks. Um, courses will be more compact. And so we've looked at how we can schedule them so it makes sense that you're learning things in a structured way that will allow you to build. Um, there are a couple courses where you'll be working on projects that uh, will integrate with each other. Um, and so uh, if you want, we could post a uh, proposed schedule for the courses so that you can see when they're going to be offered and, and how they're going to integrate with each other. Okay, um, our next question is, will it be offered every fall term? Yes, that is our intention. And so this is our, this will be our first cohort, but our intention is that it will be offered in future years, every future year. 
And also uh, what we hope will happen in the next few years is that this will build into a professional master's degree um, where people who complete the courses for the certificate will be able to apply those to the professional masters. Um, so uh, actually, do you want, Justin, do you want to answer who's the target clientele for this course? What type of student? Uh, yeah, thanks, uh, Sear, for the question. The, we're targeting students, mainly we're targeting um, students who are graduating uh, with a bachelor degree in uh, science. And it's also open to people who have, you know, have graduated uh, with a bachelor degree in the past and have gone on to to uh, something else, or maybe are in the industry already. But the main focus um, presently has been for uh, newly graduating um, students who are who are uh, will be newly graduating with a with a bachelor degree. Okay, and this sort of ties into the next question, which is what will be the prerequisites for the program or the specific classes? So um, we have uh, listed some prereqs in terms of some basic chemistry, biology. Um, and so uh, with those, uh, you, you do need a basic science background. So there won't be any specific uh, prerequisites in terms of higher level uh, biologies, chemistry, but just the, the basics. Okay, um, our next question. Is the program for current graduate students or is it a separate certificate for non-registered students? Uh, so uh, as it will be restricted to students that are enrolled in the certificate. So you will not be able to take courses um, that are offered through the certificate as part of a different program. Uh, if you are a graduate student, you would be, you've, you've uh, completed a, a graduate degree somewhere, you'd be more than welcome to um, come to the program and uh, enroll in it. Uh, it um, Therefore, I guess we consider it a separate certificate for students. Okay, um, will there be a First Nations component? Again, uh, Justin, do you wanna take that one? Yeah, it, there, there isn't a specific uh, course for that, but of course, um, First Nations have been highly involved with the aquaculture industry uh, in Canada. Um, quite a bit here in British Columbia. And so that will be integrated into several of the courses. Um, and what kind of work do you expect your graduates to do? Yeah, again, um, the graduates should um, be, when they leave the program, they'll have been exposed to a lot of different aspects of the industry. So there, there are a lot of different areas where you can enter the aquaculture industry, um, you know, going through the, the slides, uh, you could see a lot of different aspects in terms of uh, research and, and uh, fish production and feed production and processing. Uh, and, and so there are a lot of uh, equipment as well. There are a lot of different areas to enter. So students uh, should not leave the program thinking that they're uh, ready to manage a farm, uh, but they will have a solid background to go in and, and combined with uh, gaining experience in the industry. Um, you know, they, I think that uh, that uh, type of uh, employee will um, you know, really have a, an opportunity to, to grow and to develop in the, in the industry. So specifically for, for um, jobs, uh, there's, there's so many, um, there's so many to, to list uh, for, to answer. But if you want to contact me offline, um, I'm happy to have a discussion about it. So I guess, I don't know if you can make a comment about um, the, type of position 
that uh, our grad these graduates might have versus someone from North Island College, for instance. Uh, yeah, North Island College has a, a program specifically um, to uh, develop uh, technicians uh, in the net pan industry. Uh, so I've I've heard uh, positive feedback about that. So this program is is a little bit different. Uh, students will be exposed to a much broader um, range of of the overall industry. So they might. Uh, they might go into uh, work uh, in net pen production uh, like that, but they might very well, uh, you know, gain an interest in some other aspect uh, of the industry. So I think uh, having that broad uh, knowledge going in uh, really uh, opens up, uh, you know, a bunch of different opportunities for that student. And no matter where they start in the industry, they'll have that knowledge to, you know, be able to branch out uh, to different areas. Okay, and we had a question or uh, maybe a comment from Jason Mann, who is uh, one of our instructors. So um, if we can unmute. Uh, Jason will have to turn on. Okay, there we go. Yeah, perfect. Okay. So yeah, I was just experimenting with the buttons, but no, seriously. <laughs> Uh, I think the question about geographic, uh, having a job in the industry, geographically, where may it take you in the future as you work in the industry? Uh, it's a comment more than a question, I think. And it just based on my own experience that you may start in British Columbia in farming industry or allied industry with suppliers or a whole supply chain. But eventually, a lot of the world is embracing aquaculture, and you traveling around, seeing a lot of things in most any country in the world. So I think it's it, the broad background here with these seven courses really gives you a, a good starting point to develop. And I think companies, uh, you know, the commercial or industrial side is really looking for people with a little bit of background in all areas, even to start as trainees, supervisors, and eventually managers. So I think it's, and geographically is really my point that it, if you want to see parts of the world, this really is a good way to uh, possibly do it as, as a really ideal uh, way. And I, my own experience has been that. I mean, it's, uh, I graduated from UBC in the 80s and more or less, I've been to most countries, but it's been aquaculture related. Uh, so keep that in mind if you're like, a, you don't want to be in a, a desk or an office role, or you think you're going to be tied to a part of Vancouver Island or something. It, it's not the case at all. Uh, so it's a very, uh, you see the world in, indirectly. And a lot of times your family also travels with you as you get a bit more into the companies. So I, I just want to make that comment from firsthand experience. No, that's great. Thank you. Um, so we had another comment. So what would be the benefit of taking this program versus doing a master's? Uh, well, I guess one thing would be that the program is only four months. And so with that, of course, there are benefits and limitations. So we are being quite uh, ambitious in what we are trying to cover in the program. So I do think you'll get quite a broad um, view of the industry and, and develop a background in a number of areas uh, in that four months and uh, be ready to go out and get a job. Of course, uh, because of the limited time, uh, you won't have an opportunity to do an in-depth research project, for instance, that you would with some master's programs. Um, I don't know, anything else to add, Justin, on that? Or I think that's good, uh, Chris. Yeah, that's the, the big difference is that that uh, in-depth uh, research component, uh, which yeah. could, you know, in, in the future potentially be at this program could develop into that. But right now it's not a degree program. Mm -hmm. And uh, we do have some research projects that will be done uh, at, in West Van in the uh, Department of Fishery and Oceans labs there. So they've been very interested in working with us on this program. So that'll be a great opportunity to work with their facilities. Okay, um, 
Actually, here's another one, Justin, maybe you can. While I understand the focus of the program is optimizing production, will there be discussion and learning um, surrounding ways to not only maximize production, but minimize impact? Yeah, it's a, a really good question and, and a super important uh, aspect of aquaculture right now is, is, uh, is the focus on that. So the courses will uh, definitely address that. I mean, um, the uh, Andrea's course uh, is really um, focused on that uh, specifically, on ecological sustainability of aquaculture. Uh, so there'll be a, a big focus on that. And really, um, the other uh, courses will all touch on that in some way. Um, you know, the fish, um, uh, nutrition feeds and feeding will will uh, address that as well. Um, production systems will address that. So it, that will be uh, a component of, of lots of the program. And we're hoping the graduates will be uh, some of the and uh, a force within the industry to promote these positive changes that that are needed. Okay, um, how does this uh, program compare with the Practical Fish and Aqua program at VIU? Yeah, I, I, that's, um, I'm not sure exactly is, is the answer. Um, you know, the, the VIU uh, programs, uh, I think are, um, there's some, uh, changes either have recently happened or are happening with the programs. So I'm not 100% up to speed with, uh, you know, the exact um, offering there right now. Okay. Um, and uh, Risa is asking again, so the level of job that can be obtained upon graduation. So I think we sort of addressed this thing, you know, you're not going to be going and managing a large fish operation right from the start. Um, so hopefully we've answered that question, but if you would like more clarification, let us know. Now, the other part is um, what's the minimum and maximum number of students for the program? And so we are committed to offering the program this year. So um, basically there is no minimum. Uh, the maximum we're looking at would be between 15 to 20 students for the program. Um, and Justin, maybe you wanna talk about site visits for the students. Site visits, uh, they're, they're still being uh, developed right now, but it looks like there'll uh, be a site visit uh, almost every week of the program. N not every week, but just about every week, uh, there'll be a, a site visit. And was one of those still possibly flying into a operation in the interior? Or? Uh, well, yeah, there'll be a variety. So we want to look at the different types of systems and get the students out to to see uh, a net pen facility, a RAS uh, facility, um, you know, hopefully a broodstock operation, uh, hatchery. Uh, they'll see uh, fish processing, uh, uh, feed manufacturing, so that we'll, we'll be able to get the students um, really connected with the industry with a with a you know a broad scope of the industry and students will be able to see that firsthand okay and then there's a question will it be accredited from the first semester so i'm not really sure what you mean by accredited um so the standards to get into the program will be the same as for the graduate of faculty uh, faculty of graduate studies here at ubc uh, and that's why we'll be able to ladder courses into a professional master's degree if that um, is developed in the future as we plan. Uh, and yeah, so if, if you need clarification on that, please let me know. Okay, and it looks like we just had a comment um, from Sai saying, yes, I agree with Justin, or Jason, sorry. Even on farm folks end up traveling uh, the world, if that's your interest. Yeah, so lots of opportunities. So if anybody has any other questions, um, let's see. 
How applicable would this program be to students who are interested in neotropical freshwater aquaculture? Justin, I'll let you do that. Uh, yeah, you know, a, a lot of the uh, concepts will be um, will be applicable. The focus, uh, for the most part, is production in uh, in uh, British Columbia is what we're going to be able to see. Uh, so mostly uh, cold water aquaculture, uh, but the concepts in terms of production systems, uh, feeds and health. Uh, you know, reproduction and and uh, sustainability, business and processing, all of those are applicable to, uh, you know, different types of aquaculture. So we wouldn't be working with the specific uh, species or learning about the specific uh, warmer water uh, species in, in any depth, uh, but definitely uh, all of the courses uh, will have um, transferable uh, knowledge. Okay. Are there, is there anything else that we can elaborate on or that's come up? Okay, then what was the main reason why this program was developed? Is it because aquaculture is growing? or that not many programs exist. So we will be the only graduate program um, in aquaculture in BC. So uh, there was a gap there that we saw. Um, and uh, Justin, you wanna continue commenting on that or? I, I think a, a big uh, instigator was the need for more people choosing aquaculture as a career path. I think there's uh, the industry, of course, is is growing, and uh, there's really, I think, um, a, a gap there, and we see that in particular, um, you know, with all aspects of the industry. But recently, with the more development in land-based aquaculture, uh, there's just a huge gap in expertise. So I think that's really um, what we want to do: is have more career-oriented people, um, you know, getting into the industry. And in some ways, I guess, a little bit coming full circle. So you did some aquaculture um, when you were here previously as a student. It kind of fell away and uh, seems like an ideal time to be bringing it back to UBC. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, um, you all have our website. Um, so if you do, and our email address. And so if you end up with uh, additional questions that we haven't addressed, or if you have any uh, questions about registering for the program or how things are working at UBC, uh, please let us know and we'll try and answer them. Uh, we are still a little bit uncertain about how things will roll out in the fall. We are committed to having the program and uh, no matter what, if it's more by distance or uh, in person, um, I think it's going to be a, a great program. Ah, funding opportunities. So, uh, Nicholas, maybe you could clarify, do you mean in terms of scholarships for entering the program or? Yes. Um, so we do know that funding is a, an important issue for students. Uh, we are working on finding sponsors for student uh, scholarships. Uh, Justin, I don't know if you have any updates at this point or? Uh, that, that's in the works. So we hope to have some uh, type of funding opportunities, but uh, that is uh, yet uh, to be uh, fully developed. Not okay. yet, but hopefully. Okay. Myron asks about uh, shellfish aquaculture. Definitely the focus is on uh, is on finfish for most of the program. However, there will be um, shellfish and 
uh, IMTA, which is Integrated Multi-Trophic Aquaculture, um, as well as aquaponics. Uh, so we will uh, have some inclusion there of uh, seaweeds, uh, plants, um, and uh, shellfish. Um, I'm not sure the extent of it uh, yet, and and uh, as the courses are are uh, fully developed, we'll we'll see that. So the the um, answer is uh, there'll be some shellfish, but the focus will be on pinfish. Okay, and then a question about the estimated tuition total. So the tuition for all the courses, it's it's on a uh, per credit basis, but it will work out to $9,000 for uh, the seven courses. And then there is a $1,000 fee that will cover all the field trips and materials that you will need for the course. Uh, there may be e-learning, and so uh, if we are restricted to uh, not having on-campus courses in the fall, which is a possibility, uh, then it will be e-learning. However, our intent uh, was to have it on campus, um, and we'll have to just see what happens. And it'll be, uh, you know, a big component is also the... Uh, connection with industry and being able to do the field trips. Mm -hmm. So that's, uh, that is you know, a little bit of a challenge with the e-learning option. Okay. Any other comments on seaweed in BC? Do we? Yeah, well, it sounds like uh, province uh, believes that seaweed is up and coming. And uh, so that's, uh, that's good. I'm, I'm sure that uh, they will um, be uh, in full support of the program. Okay. And yeah. yes, actually, I, I should have mentioned in terms of tuition, the numbers that I quoted, 9,000 plus 1,000 for domestic, 15,000 plus 1,000 for international students. Thank you, Leah. <laughs> yeah. We do have... Uh, in, on uh, the production systems uh, course, uh, we have uh, someone uh, coming in to as a guest lecturer on um, on Terry Chopin. Uh, so we will uh, definitely have some seaweed inclusion there. I guess the uh, one thing that we uh, realized is that four months is restricting us somewhat in the topics that we can cover. So uh, we had to be a little bit selective. Yeah, it's a good idea, Sierra, to, to bring in uh, guest lectures. So we will definitely plan to do that. Our plans, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So once again, thank you for joining us. I hope this has uh, been informative and we've answered most of your questions. Let us know if you have anything else. Is the course already fully booked? No, the course is not already fully booked. So um, if you are interested, certainly you can email, uh, actually the Faculty of Graduate Studies here at LFS or myself, um, just contact the, uh, use the contact information, the website. Uh, and the email address. Okay, so thank you all. And uh, thank you, Justin, for your presentation. Oh, our cohort size will be uh, 20 maximum.